Hey everyone, welcome back to Rigi RCNA class. I am Nick Sha. Today we need to talk about boarding principle and the configuration of a layer 3 switch. Our engineer Tom received a new project. This time, the company requires him to make this administration department to communicate with another market department. They are in different VLANs, and these two switches are layer 2 switch. So, how to implement this function? Tom asked the manager, and the manager told him a layer 3 switch could implement this function. So, here, this switch should be a layer 3 switch. But how does the layer 3 switch to make different VLAN communicate with each other? Now, for example, we can think these two departments are like two companies. So, we need to go out of this company, then go into another company. This means we need to get out of this gate and then get in this gate. So, here we have a summary. A layer 3 switch is needed to connect PCs in different network segments. And the gateway address needed to be configured on hosts. Okay, so here this is like a layer 3 switch. And we need to configure IP address for this switch for this gate. In the meantime, okay. Now, let us see how to configure it. This is a layer 3 switch. We configure this VLAN 40 and the VLAN 50. Then, pay attention, we need to configure interface VLAN. In this interface VLAN, we can create the IP address. And this IP address, in fact, is like the gate. Okay, so for these computers, we can also configure the default gateway here. We should use the interface VLAN's IP address, and we call it a root map. This is the gate. Okay, here, this is a complete configuration. Beside configuration of this VLAN, and interface VLAN. Don't forget to configure the interface mode. This switch needs to forward multiple VLANs. So here, these two interfaces should configure trunk mode. If you forget this technology, please review our course. And for the layer 2 switch, just configure VLAN and change the mode. Here, access. Here, trunk. Okay, then in layer 3 switch, we can create the interface VLAN. In fact, it has a name called a Switch Virtual Interface, SVI. And each SVI maps to a VLAN. Okay, for the layer 3 switch, beside the MAC address table, it also has the ARP table. So do you remember we can use show ARP to check. Now let us see the steps of this project, okay? Step one. Now PC1 need to pin the PC4 in another department. Pay attention, because the destination is in another subnet. So PC1 will just use the gateways MAC address for the destination MAC address. So for encapsulating the packet, PC1 will send an ARP request first. But pay attention, this ARP is request the gateway. Do you remember? We need to get out of this company first. So we need to go to the gateway here. 
Then the layer three switch will reply it. Okay. After PC one learns the MAC address of this interface, now it can finish the encapsulation and send the ICMP echo. Please review here. The source MAC address is itself destination MAC address. Pay attention, it's the layer 3 switch, this interface. Source IP is itself. Destination IP is PC3. It never changed because this is the source and we hope go to here, okay? When the gateway receives the packet, ICMP packet, it also needs to send an ARP request. Because this is the first time the layer 3 switch, it doesn't know the PC3's MAC address in its MAC address table. Okay, so it will send the ARP request to the PC3. And the PC3 will reply it. So after ARP sending, okay, now layer 3 switch can send the ICMP. In fact, it will help the PC1 to forward the ICMP packet because the last time it received it and uh, has not forwarded it. And this time, the source MAC address is itself and the destination MAC address is PC3. Source IP is also PC1. Destination IP is PC3. So through this process, we can find that the source and the destination IP address keep unchanged. Okay, this is because if it changed, we cannot know the destination again. Okay, but the source and the destination MAC address are changed each time. This is because one subnet, just like one company, we go out of it and then get into another company. Every time we need to pass through the gate. Okay, and we call it the gateway here. So now let us say the forwarding process again. First, PC1 send ARP to layer 3 switch. Layer 3 switch will reply this ARP. This is for requesting the MAC address of the gateway. And the second, when PC1 learns the MAC address of the gateway, it can send the ICMP packet. And the source is here, destination is here. But when this packet arrived in the switch, this switch also it doesn't know the PC's MAC address, so it will send ARP request again, then reply it. The update layer 3 switch can forward this ICMP packet to the PC. So after it, the opposite direction is similar. This PC will reply it to here, okay? But this time, because they already learned the MAC address in their link, so it doesn't need to send ARP again. Okay, do you remember when the PC received the ARP request packet, it also learned the gateway's MAC address. Now, let us have a summary. Today, we learned the forwarding principle and the configuration of a layer 3 switch. We know the layer 3 switch can help us to forward a packet between different VLANs. And we also learned the interface VLAN. Its name is SVI. It's like the gateway of the VLAN. I also leave you several exercises here Please read and answer it. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.